Collectibles are a huge part in many, many games, and I want to showcase a way using events that you can have a variety of different types of collectibles. You can walk into them and have different events happen for each one. All right, so I have my little sandbox Unity project here, and the first thing I want to do is introduce an interface to you guys. So I'm actually going to create a new C Sharp script in our assets folder, and I'll call this iCollectible, and we'll open it up. We don't need start and update. And if you've seen other videos, this is similar to an abstract class, but interfaces are a little bit different. They're not classes at all. So we can actually replace class with interface. And then we don't want to inherit from mono behavior, so we can get rid of that. And the only thing I'm going to put in this interface is a single method called collect. So we can say public void collect. And I'm just going to have it take no arguments. And that's it. So this is the interface. And what makes an interface different than, say, an abstract class or something else, right? Like, what makes this special? If you know them, that's fine. I'm just going to cover it really quick. Well, let's say I had another script called coin. And we plan on putting this coin script, you know, on, <laughs> on the coin. So we can open this up. And right now, it's just a blank default Unity model behavior. So the big difference between an interface and a class is that an interface is really just a template. You can only inherit from a single class. Whereas with interfaces, you can inherit from as many as you want. So for this coin, I could inherit from mono behavior, which is a class. But in terms of interfaces, I could inherit from iCollectible and I can inherit from any other interface as well. I mean, C Sharp has some built-in ones like iDictionary, let's say. Uh, this is not what I actually want. But you know, you could imagine you had a whole bunch of different templates you want to inherit from and you'll see they're both like erroring out right now, right? And in the case of iCollectible, you'll see it's just because we're not implementing our interface. So if we tell it to implement our interface, right, it just creates a public void collect method, which is the one thing we defined here. And so you could, you know, you could inherit from a whole bunch of different interfaces, whereas a class you can only inherit from one. So with that said, hold that thought because we're actually going to be bringing this back up in just a minute here. So on this coin class, we could inherit from mono behavior and i collectible, and right now it makes us create a collect method. That's a public void collect with no arguments, and that's what we want. So for now, we can get rid of start and update because this is going to be a pretty simple thing. And for now, I'll just say debug.log, you collected a coin. We're going to actually implement, you know, the logic here to collect a coin and how you could set that up. Just give me one second. I want to explain one thing really fast. So now on my coin, I have this circle collider 2D and it has is trigger set to true. That's the only real component on here. And then we have our coin script that doesn't really do much right now. So let's actually create another script called collector. All right, so our collector script is going to be a mono behavior, and it's going to be very straightforward. So the only thing we want our collector to do is to determine if we've collided with something collectible and tell it to collect itself. So we could say void on trigger enter 2D. Normally what we would do is you would check, you know, by tag or by like player component or whatever the component might be, right? So if you're a newer developer, it might be your first thought to say something like collision dot get component of type coin, right? So you could do something like var coin equals that and you see if coin does not equal null and you tell it to coin dot collect, right? But we don't want to do this at like the coin level. We'd rather do this at, you know, the base level, either the abstract class or the interface level because we don't want to have to also do a check for something like a secret note or something and you have a different type of collectible and you tell that to collect itself, right? That, that would kind of be annoying. You'd just be duplicating logic when you don't need to be. Again, we'd rather do it from the base class or the interface. And there's pros and cons with each method. For me, I kind of like doing I collectible. Collectible is equal to collision dot get component of type I collectible, right? And then we can see if the collectible is not equal to null. So if it exists, then we just tell it to collect. And now we could have like a million different things inherit from this I collectible interface and they all have a collect method and this works just fine. It's very, very clean. So the downside to this approach and just interfaces in general is you can't actually declare things like fields, right? Like this is a template, as I mentioned before, um, which isn't that different than an abstract class, but they do both function differently and serve different purposes. And so what I'm gonna show is pretty basic, but it is also completely possible for you to make a public abstract class that inherits from mono behavior and it also inherits from iCollectible, right? We could have this abstract class called collectible 
and then you have a abstract method called collect and then coin could inherit directly from the collectible class itself and then you'd have to override this collect method in your coin class and so this is another option if you'd rather use an abstract class um, you are kind of locked to one base class right so instead of mod behavior you have this collectible and that could cause some issues maybe but with unity not really because you know we kind of sidestep a limitation like that because we can just attach more components to our game objects so there's no reason you can't really structure this in a way where you, having one base class isn't a problem you can just keep adding more components Anyway, my main point being is this is just another option that you should be aware of. You can do it this way with an abstract class that also uses an interface. But for my purposes, I'm just gonna have our collector use this iCollectible interface where it's simple and we just tell it to collect, right? Did we collide with the collectible interface? Yep, okay, collect. Very, very simple. So at this point, well, we're now telling our collectible to collect itself and the scripts are attached to the game objects. So if I go ahead and collide with this coin, you'll see it says you collected a coin. Okay, so that's all of our setup. Let's actually talk about how we make this do something interesting. If you've seen any of my observer pattern or event videos, then this is another case I'm gonna use events. So at the top of our coin class, I'm gonna make a static event that we can have things subscribe to. So I'm gonna say public static event. The delegate type's gonna be action, which is gonna complain at you until you say using system at the top of your script. And then I'm gonna call this on coin collected. So whereas the I collectible template, you know, just everyone has a collect script, I really like to break down every single different collectible into its own event, because that's where you have a bunch of different things needing to respond to the events, right? Like a coin could probably go in your inventory and act as currency, whereas like a trophy is probably part of an achievement system, whereas you might collect some stuff that you might have in player housing or something like some other system. So anyway, you're gonna have different events for different types of collectibles. And then in our collect method, really what we wanna do is just say, on coin collected question mark so we know it's not null and there's actually listeners subscribed to the event and then we say dot invoke you can also do some logging here if you want so you know that it's actually you know being fired debug.log coin collected and then we can also destroy this game object so that it goes away all right so then i have this audio manager and it's really not important at all what it's doing i'm just kind of showing you how to subscribe to an event so let's say i wanted this audio manager to play a coin sound well because our delegate is an action for this event, that means it's void with no arguments. So in here I can say public void play coin sound with no arguments. And then if you had something like a sound library or a sound dictionary you could access somewhere, maybe here is where you'd fetch the coin sound and try and you know look up for that. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna be storing this at the top of our script here as an audio clip. That's just for the demo. But once you have the coin sound, I can just say play audio clip and pass in our coin sound. And I really wanna point out, it's not important what this function's doing. It's really whatever you want to happen when you collect into something. Um, but this is just gonna play a sound. And then in our on enable method, which is a unity like magic function that gets called when a game component gets enabled, we wanna say coin dot on coin collected, which is our event plus equals, so we're subscribing something to this event, and we wanna say play coin sound. And we don't wanna have parentheses because we're not invoking the function, we're just referencing it. And then on disable, we wanna do the same exact thing, except minus equals, so that we unsubscribe from the event when we disable the component, and again, play coin sound. I also have this coin text right here, right? It's gonna increment when we collect coins. I have this increment coin count function on here where we're just increasing a count and then updating the text. So again, we would wanna subscribe to this event as well. This is a void function with no arguments, so it's an action. And we're just gonna subscribe and unsubscribe just like we just showed. And so when we play, we can walk into this and there we go. It played a sound, it increases our count and we logged it. So at this point, you can make as many collectibles as you want. I could make another one and call this like, I don't know, gem. And I could put that over here, it's just a circle. I could make it like purple or something. And then in our gem script, we can inherit from iCollectible. We can implement the interface. We can make another event and in collect, well, we can call that event. 
And so this is basically an exact identical script to the coin, right? Except this is a gem with a new event. And so I do really want to point out, you could have a whole bunch of different logic here in your collect function that's validating. Like let's say you had puzzle pieces you wanted to collect, but you had to collect them in a certain order. Well, you could store that order in the class, right? Like in your collect method, you could make sure that you're doing it in the proper order. You could have some validation here. You could set up any rules you need for collecting. You could set up anything you want. This approach gives you that flexibility where everything is kind of in its own lane with its own events. And so in order to call collect, you can set up your own validation rules and then every single type of collectible also has its own set of responders to it as well, which is a lot of flexibility. Is it perfect? No, I think there are ways you can improve it, but I don't think you really need to, especially if you're a newer developer. And if not, like this is going to take you really far in your games. I've used this in big projects before and I've almost never really had an issue with it. I'm trying to think Think back of when I would have. I'm sure there's been slight refactoring I've had to do, but I was able to get a lot of good utility out of this. Right, so in our audio manager, I could basically have this pickup sound instead of a coin sound. I could have a function called play pickup sound, and then I could say gem on gem collected, play pickup sound. Same thing, we'll just unsubscribe from it. That's just good practice so things don't break and error out. And so now this gem's gonna play a different noise than the coin. Again, this coin, maybe when I collide with it, it's also interacting with some sort of inventory system or currency system and being managed in a completely different way where this gem is purely a collectible for like achievement hunting and this is being tracked in some log somewhere and it plays a different sound. I didn't have it delete itself, but it all works, right? Our collector is always gonna be looking for any type of eye collectible. It's just gonna tell it to collect itself and we could have a hundred different types of collectibles in the game with their own set of responders to their events and their own set of validation and rules that can be handled in this collect method in order to collect itself. So I know I didn't get too deep into the example, but this is all you really need to set it up. At this point, it's really just adapting it to your game and your wants. So I hope this helped you out. Like the video if it did, comment down below if you're confused about anything. I'm happy to walk through any of this with you or discuss it. Let me know if you think it's good, if it sucks, if you do it better. I'd love to hear it anyway. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.